What is going on guys? Grave here today. Let's talk about all the changes that Infinity Ward has implemented into Modern Warfare 2 from the beta for the launch of the game. Now, of course, the game's going to kind of vary in release time depending on where you live. If you're here in the U.S. like I am, if you're looking on the West Coast, California side of the world, uh, you're looking at 9 p.m. launch time. For me here in the Central Time Zone, it is going to be coming out at 11 and of course at 12 o'clock on the East Coast. So, just kind of take that and, and kind of figure out where you're at with time zones, wherever you live in the world. And you kind of can figure out exactly where uh, and when you'll be able to play the game. Now, of course, Infinity War did post a thing on Twitter about exactly all the time zones. So you can look on that as well. But when it comes to changes, they wanted to thank all the fans for playing. Uh, they said they had a record breaking number of players in the beta. And they've get, gathered a lot of feedback from the fans and want to kind of highlight some of those changes they're making. So when Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer is released, you'll, you'll be able to see these differences from what we saw in the beta. First of all is visibility. When it comes to enemy visibility, they have added diamond icons above the heads of enemies, which should make it easier for players to clearly identify opponents in the game. I know a lot of people are still upset of why they just took away the old nameplates like we used to have. But at least we have some kind of indicator that shows those enemy players. Additionally, they've also continued to tweak lighting and contrast for improving enemy visibility. And that was an issue, in my opinion, in Modern Warfare 2019. And it's always kind of been an issue in Infinity Ward's games. I think it has something to do with their color scheme. Sometimes it's hard to see players in certain areas of the map. Hopefully that has been well improved on since the beta. When it comes to audio, the in-world activation sound uh, effect volume range of Dead Silence field upgrade has been drastically decreased, which I think is still going to be a disappointment to some people because yes, Dead Silence is still a field upgrade. It's not going to be an actual perk. And I know when it comes to the pro scene, uh, the pro league for Call of Duty, a lot of the pro players are really upset because it does make um, kind of intense, you know, matches, especially if you're in the pro scene, you're playing for lots of money. It makes those matches of search and destroy kind of not as fun to watch and I'm sure not as fun to play because everyone's waiting for Dead Silence to be active as a field upgrade instead of just having it automatically as a perk. Now when it comes to uh, some other audio changes they shortened the overall range of footsteps audio which will allow enemy players to get closer to targets before they're able to detect those footsteps which I think is a good thing but at the same time you kind of have to meet a happy medium there with that because if the footsteps are too loud it's annoying like it was in the beta. And if your enemy footsteps and your teammates footsteps and your own footsteps, it's kind of a hard thing to get everything just right. And you still want to be able to hear an enemy. You don't want someone to be able to walk up right behind you. They also tweaked the teammate footstep audio. So we'll kind of have to wait and see what the footstep audio sounds like in game. I know a lot of people were happy with the way it was in 2019. Uh, some were not. So we'll have to wait and see if it's kind of more like Modern Warfare 2019 or if it's a little bit more uh, you know, like it was in the beta, but just toned down a bit. Also, they've made some changes to third person. It says aiming down sights will now stay in third person uh, POV for low zoom optics. Only high zoom optics beginning with the ACOG and higher. And special optics such as hybrids and thermals will revert to the first person POV. They've also continued to tweak weapons across the game following both feedback from the beta players and game data. Players can expect uh, expect more specifics on weapon tuning as they continue to support post-launch. We'll probably have a bigger weapon update sometime down the road. I would probably guess one of those, you know, changes would probably come within the first couple of weeks. We're not going to, we know we're going to get a lot of updates when it comes to Call of Duty. We always do when the game is first released. Also, when it comes to UI, they've been working hard on numerous updates to their UI to make accessing and customizing your loadouts more seamless. We've made improvements to navigate uh, navigation of menus and will continue to optimize their UI. And that has also been a thing over the years to me. The game's UI starts out, menus, things like that. It's not as great at the beginning of the game, and it seems to improve as the game goes on. So I definitely have faith that uh, Infinity Ward will definitely work that out because, in my opinion, a good UI helps out when playing a game because if it's a kind of messy UI, it's just kind of annoying to you know navigate everything. Movement, slide, ledge hanging, and diving has been further refined. They've also addressed some movement exploits from the beta. A lot of people were still able to somewhat slide cancel or have the ability to slide cancel. And I think Infinity Ward is trying to completely do away with that. So we'll have to kind of wait and see. A lot of bunny hopping as well. And I think that's kind of been worked on also. We'll have to wait and see, like I said, though, until we all get to hop in the game and play. 
may have to be some more tweaks going down the road. And they've also implemented some changes that uh, aim to reduce lobby disbandment between matches. They look forward to testing this at a large scale. They did not give any details. I know a lot of people have been asking for lobbies not to be disbanded over the years. That has really been a thing since skill-based matchmaking to its kind of the form it's in right now is when that disbanding of the lobby started. So I'm hoping that they have found a way to maybe tone back that skill-based matchmaking to the way it used to be a long time ago and will allow lobbies to stay together because that makes that just really makes public matches more fun. That allows for pub stomping. It just allows for the game to be played like it used to be. We'll have to wait and see how that works out. But anyway, guys, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Let me know if you're hopping on playing Modern Warfare 2 tonight as soon as it releases. I'm going to try to stay up and play a little bit myself um, and hopefully get some footage for you guys and get some videos out tomorrow. But anyway, leave me a comment with your thoughts. Of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.